As far as this sort of uh, interplay between retrieval strength and story strength, a, a good example is, for example, a student, undergraduate or graduate student, who let's say goes, moves somewhere to go to school. Just think now what they confront from a human memory standpoint. Now there's a whole set of new people. They got a new phone number maybe. They've got a, for sure a new street address. There's names of buildings. There's streets to learn. There's professors' names to learn. Other students' names to learn. All of these things are sort of new learning. And gradually as I use those, in navigating my way around this new environment, in interacting with all the new people, in, in taking my courses, in learning things about the campus. All that is what I'm starting to use and starting to learn. And things that are in competition with that from my past will gradually become inaccessible. I mean, obviously, Every so often I may return on a vacation and resurrect those things. But happily, they become inaccessible, but they're, they're not lost. When I go back to earlier environments, many of them will come back quickly, be relearnable. So it, it, these dynamics go on all the time. And another way to think about it, which is a very interesting aspect of human memory, is that using our memories shapes our memory. Things we recall and access and produce become more retrievable in the future. Things in competition with that gradually become less usable. So it's a really dynamic system in the way human memory works.